Voters in South East Queensland will head to the polls for what will be the first test of Premier Stephen Miles. Well, joining me now is former Minister in the Howard Government and Bondi Partners, Senior Advisor Peter McGoran. Good morning, how are you? Excellent, Janie. Well, I tell you what, it's a record election year across the world, isn't it? It's um, happening... <laughs> Everywhere you turn, there's Absolutely. an election. We're in Russia at the moment, we've got the by-election. Uh, let's start with that. So um, it's interesting because the new survey is looking like well, Ipswich West could be won by the opposition. Yes, Labor holds Ipswich West by 14.5%. Um, I would expect the Liberal opposition, Liberal National Party opposition to make significant inroads mm. uh, because they have momentum. Uh, the, the polling of the whole of the state of Queensland is very bad for the incumbent Steve Miles government. Yeah, what is the popularity of him that you're hearing? Well, they had to ditch Anastasia Palaszczuk towards the end of last year. Her, her personal figures, as well as that of the party, were in the basement, irrecoverable. Uh, this will be a test of whether or not Steve Miles has been able to have any impact in reversing those disastrous figures. I suspect not. Mm. I, I think the Labor Party in Queensland, state-wise, is too far in decline and I don't think Steve Miles is the person to have rescued the situation. And getting back to the by-election, the other seat, Inala, which was um, Anastasia Palaszczuk, it's a pretty strong Labor seat. Uh, what do you think will happen there? Here it's a 28% mm. margin in favour of Labor. Again, I think that the LNP will make significant inroads. They have to. The, the, they can't get away, the LNP, with just the uh, managed expectations of a 4% swing against an, the government, as happened in Dunkley recently. They have to make a significant uh, erosion of the Labor vote in these two by-elections if they're going to win the October election. All right. So if uh, they don't... What's going to happen? Back to the drawing board mm. for the LNP. I expect them to. I'd be yep. very surprised if there's not a swing of 6 7% in one or both of the two by-elections. Tasmanian election next weekend. Yes, well, Tasmanian's always um, uh, an example all of its own. It's got the Hare Clark system, which is akin to a Senate-style uh, voting system. Um, they've increased, Janie, the seats from 28 to 35, uh, as if Tasmania needed more politicians. They've got 12 senators, they've got five House of Representatives, they've got 32 local council uh, for a population of 540,000 people. But in their wisdom, they've increased to 20, 35. That means basically neither Labor nor Liberal will ever have a majority. Mm. It looks like the Labor Liberal government are well in front at the moment, but even so, they're only going to win 14 seats. You need 18 to form government. They're going to have to be a minority government. Unfortunately, that's not a good thing for any state, let alone Tasmania. All right, let's um, move on to nuclear energy, which is going to be a topic of discussion yeah. for the next, um, I don't know how long for, but, um, yeah, so Peter Dutton pushing it hard and... Uh, you know, the talk about the recent CSIRO report as well was big in the news this week. Yeah, my, my rule of thumb with CSIRO is use them for the science, not the economics. Mm. Um, there's a number of examples in the past where CSIRO has come up short, particularly in the climate issues, uh, climate change issues, because they're not as skilled at economics as they are science. But leaving that aside, Peter Dutton's gaining great traction on this issue. Sure. It's not a silver bullet. There are advantages and disadvantages to nuclear energy, but there is also renewables. Renewables aren't without their economic and social and environmental costs too. So let's have the debate. You can't tell millennials and Gen Z, Janie, they're not allowed to discuss the issue because there's a law passed in 1998, 25 years and more ago, that prevents uh, the establishment of a nuclear plant w w under whatever conditions. Um, they just won't cop that. So I think Dutton's on solid ground here. Yeah, there'll be plenty of arrows, but he's, he's got a lot of common sense on his side and he's up for a debate, he's up for a fight, and that's what people want. How easy is it to lift those bans if they had to? Yeah, but yeah, how would you get the legislation through the parliament? Well, if the government was serious, they would join with Labor. Mm. As with the Liberal opposition and pass it through both houses and, and jettison the Greens and the Independents, um, at least lift the legislation banning the construction of a nuclear plant. It, 
we're in a new generation of small modular reactors and so on, and young people won't be told they're not allowed to consider a scientific or, or, or a climate issue. Yeah, well, I'm being told that we have to wrap it up, so we better go. <laughs> Peter McCorran, great Thanks, to see you. Thank you so much.